Hi, my name is uh, Tom Thatcher and I'm in the Department of Family Medicine at Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota. Along with Bart Clark, I have authored a publication entitled Vitamin D Insufficiency in the Mayo Clinic Proceedings Issue, January 2011, Volume 86, Number 1. In that review, we discuss the definition of vitamin D insufficiency. We describe some of the sources of variation in vitamin D status of individuals. We also review some of the evidence related to the clinical benefits of vitamin D, and we discuss some of the indications for vitamin D testing. Well, in the past, uh, vitamin D deficiency was defined by the presence of bone disease, either nutritional rickets or osteomalacia. However, more recently, the term vitamin D insufficiency has been coined to describe suboptimal levels of vitamin D that may be associated with other health outcomes. In order to measure the vitamin D status of an individual, we look at the serum concentration of 25-hydroxyvitamin D and choose various cutoff values for defining vitamin D deficiency or vitamin D insufficiency. However, selecting a specific cutoff value for this definition is problematic uh, and we discuss the reasons for this being that there's a wide individual variation in uh, the factors that determine the vitamin D status of an individual. Some of the factors that account for variation in vitamin D levels in individuals include the person's race, their sun exposure, vitamin D intake in the diet, uh, the amount of body fat that they have, physical activity, all of these various factors can affect the vitamin D uh, and 25-hydroxy vitamin D levels in the blood. Also, an in individual's vitamin D requirement may actually uh, vary based on their calcium intake or related to individual genetic variations that affect the way they handle and uh, metabolize vitamin D, which translates into the fact that when we give a certain dose of vitamin D to those individuals, the uh, level of 25-hydroxyvitamin D is quite variable. Well, the uh, evidence for the health benefits of vitamin D are most clearly established for the skeletal benefits, and these include the prevention and treatment of nutritional rickets and osteomalacia, as well as in reducing the risk of falls and fractures in older adults. More recently, uh, other health benefits that are not skeletal in nature have been reported for vitamin D, and this covers a wide range of conditions, including uh, a reduced risk of mortality, a uh, reduced risk of cardiovascular disease, diabetes, cancers, infections, allergic disorders, musculoskeletal pain, multiple sclerosis, uh, kidney disease, and even other outcomes. But the, we review in our article the evidence for these uh, associations, and most of these, the data pertaining to the non-skeletal benefits of vitamin D derive from observational studies where associations with low 25-hydroxyvitamin D and disease outcomes are reported. These type of studies are useful for generating hypotheses, but the, uh, the lack of control for multiple confounding variables makes it difficult to conclusively demonstrate that vitamin D is actually the, the cause of the, the benefit in these particular non-skeletal conditions. The Institute of Medicine recently released a report of dietary reference intakes for vitamin D, and they also concluded that the information related to the non-skeletal benefits of vitamin D was uh, inconclusive and insufficient to uh, demonstrate that it did benefit those conditions. Uh, we do agree with the recommendation that healthy adults taking a daily intake of vitamin D of 600 international units per day, uh, that this would be 
beneficial for uh, skeletal health. However, in older adults, we advocate a dose of 800 to 2,000 international units per day in order to reduce the risk of falls and fractures. But more data is needed to demonstrate the beneficial effect of vitamin D on uh, non-skeletal health outcomes. I, I think the takeaway message is that the, the evidence behind non-skeletal benefits of vitamin D requires further study and research in order to, uh, and randomized controlled trials to show the, the actual benefits of vitamin D on those conditions and the risks of toxicity. We hope you benefited from this presentation based on the content of Mayo Clinic proceedings. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you're interested in more information about Mayo Clinic proceedings, visit our website at www.mayoclinicproceedings.org. There you will find additional videos on our YouTube channel, and you can follow us on Twitter. For more information on healthcare at Mayo Clinic, please visit www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.